Hello Algebra 2 students. In our class meeting today we went through this topic solving word problems with quadratic equations but we went through it more quickly than I would have liked. So in this video I'm going to uh, slow down a bit and go through those problems more thoroughly. This should benefit not only students who thought we did go too quickly but also any students who were absent and missed the discussion entirely. We went through five different word problems but we um, didn't go through some of them in much detail at all. So here are the five, first of all. This one talked about um, how to use the solving of quadratic equations to find x in um, a geometric problem. Then we talked about this woodland mouse problem. We talked about the problem of Big Bertha the Cannon. This shoe store problem, trying to make maximum revenue. And then and very quickly, we talked about the high school parking lot question. Each of these five, as I say, I'm going to go through, though some more quickly than others because some got more time in class than others. If you really just want to concentrate on one particular and you want to fast forward to find a particular word problem, I've separated all of them by a green screen like this. So hopefully you can fast forward and find the one that you want. Let's get started with the first word problem. This was the one that we spent the most time on in class, so I'm going to spend the least time in this video. Left side's a triangle, right side's a trapezoid. In each case, you're trying to find the value of x. Notice that x is the height in each case, but x is also used in the base in each case. I'm just going to talk about the one on the left here, the triangle, and remember the formula for the area of a triangle. I said in class there were basically three, um, three steps that were crucial in order to make sure you got the right answer. The first, I thought, sped the process up. Um, if you plug the values in here, of course, 1 half base times height, you're going to have this here in green. But I said, if you get rid of the half by multiplying the area by 2, changing 22 to 44, you'll get rid of fractions and your life will be easier. Notice the right side now looks a lot cleaner than it did up here. Second was to make sure that you do factor it down to find negative 12 and 11. This took a bit of time figuring out what the factors are of negative 132. Um, this is about as large a number and as large a factoring task as I would ask you to do without a calculator. And then the third step, and I don't even have it on here, is to realize you're going to end up with two answers, one positive and one negative. And the positive answer is the only one that makes sense because it doesn't make sense that you could have a negative height. So just to remind you, since I went over this in class, the answer here for x is 4. And if you plug 4 in for both those values, you'll find, sure enough, it does turn out to be an area of 22. OK, now moving on to the second word problem and going a little bit more thoroughly. The woodland mouse problem. You're given the equation. And it's nice when they just um, spell out the equation for you. And you certainly will find in some of your science classes, biology probably being the one where you'd study a, a woodland mouse, that they will already have the, the, the formula, the equation for you. So the question is, how far can this mouse jump and how high can it jump? Well, this equation at first glance may not look like any of the three forms of quadratics that we've talked about. Just to remind you, the three forms are standard form, vertex form, and intercept form unless you realize, oops, I'm sorry, that this is going to give you um, uh, the same information. All we've done is we've changed x to x plus 0. Now it clearly does look like intercept form. You've got two different intercepts. And one of those intercepts is stated here, the other here. Just remember those change their signs. So the left one remains 0, but the right one, instead of negative 6, becomes positive 6. And so that answers the question, how far can the woodland mouse jump? Six feet. Next question, how high can it jump? Well, the highest point is going to be halfway between. Remember, with all of these parabolas that we'll be talking about, they are symmetrical. So the highest place is going to be at the very middle between the two intercepts. Well, that middle, in terms of x value, in terms of distance, is going to be three feet. So plug three into the equation. And you've got negative 2 ninths times 3 times 3 minus 6, or in other words, that, or in other words, that. Notice now that these 9s can cancel. Also notice that the negatives cancel out, become positive. 
So with all of this canceled out, all you're left with here is 2, y equals 2. The height of that mouse hop is 2 feet. We did talk a fair bit about this in class. The next problem we talked even, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I do want to mention one thing. Uh, I'd said the equation was given to you in intercept form. It could just as easily have been given to you in a different form. What if it had been given to you in standard form? All I've done here, just to turn this into standard form, I don't want it in standard form, I'm just showing you it could have been given you that way. Uh, all I had to do was um, distribute that negative 2 ninths x times the two things inside the parens. I get this. Now, if I factor out what the two have in common, let's go back here and look at this. Um, this problem, yes, it's in standard form, but I, um, factoring, we've talked about before, without a C term, the factoring um, approach that we typically take straight from algebra 1 doesn't help very much. Instead, I'm looking for common factors between these terms. And the common factors are x and negative 2 ninths, so I factor those things out. And what I'm left with, this I just have x left, and this I have negative 6 left. Okay, well now, this looks a, lo a, um, uh, a lot like um, intercept fo form again. And the way that I could have hit the ground would have been when y is 0. y could have been 0 either if x had been 0 or if x had been positive 6. So that's how I would have solved this if it had been given to me in standard form. I mentioned this, this variation on the woodland mouse problem, because when we come to the next word problem, which was the Big Bertha question, it is given to me here in that standard form without a c value. So just to remind you how we did the woodland mouse problem when it was in standard form, we turned that into this format by factoring common factors out. But this would certainly require your use of a calculator to do that factoring. A decimal like this, or even a decimal like that, is not something I'd give you on a no calculator portion of a test. So let's factor out what we can in common, certainly x factors out of both. Roughly speaking, though, 0.0196 also factors out of both. And if you factor that out, you're going to be left, much like you were over here, with an equation that has an x term outside a binomial. And once again, the way that y could be 0, in other words, the way that you could find the places where the cannonball is at ground level, would be here if x is 0, or here if x is 70. By the way, I think that's supposed to be, yeah, it is. That's supposed to be, my bad, negative 70. My, my apologies. I should say negative 70 there. So there's the path of that cannonball, and it lands, at, as we say, at 70. Notice the units are miles. The textbook called it an incredibly long distance. I do think, particularly for Fort World War I, that 70 miles would be an incredibly long distance. I even had to go back and look it up uh, on the internet and convince myself that a cannon from back in World War I, back 100 years ago, could have shot a cannonball that far. But it's true. OK, that's the end of that word problem. And that brings us to the shoe store question. Hit the pause button and read this. OK, I'm going to assume that you did that. I wanted to have you read this one, because this is one we barely talked about at all in class. I do also want to draw your attention to something else. This word problem is a lot like a word problem that is worked out in the textbook. So I suggest that you do go to page 259 of the textbook and look at example 8 and read that through as well. So I'm going to ask you again, hit the pause button, go to page 259 and read example 8. And familiar familiarize yourself with what the textbook authors did with that problem. Okay, from here forward, I'm going to assume that you know example 8 fairly well, and so I can refer to that as I go through the solution to this problem about the shoe store. You're looking for maximum revenue. Revenue is equal to units times price. 
how many, in this case, shoes you sell times the price of those shoes. So units and price, well, like example eight, you need to plug the values that you have into uh, the equation. Units, um, you sell 200 pairs, and every time you increase the price, you reduce the number of pairs by two. Also for price, you start off at $60. Every time you increase the pr uh, price, you increase it by $1. That's the reason for 60 plus 1x, as well as the binomial on the left. Remember those, the x values actually turn out to be x is equal to a price increase every time you step up in price. Hope that makes sense. Again, go back to example eight if it doesn't. Like in example eight, factor out what you can from each binomial. From the right, you really can't factor anything out other than one, but from the left, you can factor two out. Now, I recommend that you spin these around. 100 minus x and 60 plus x, I simply reverse their positions. I do that because now it should look a fair bit like intercept form. The only problem is intercept form um, is best applied if the, co if the uh, x values are positive. So factor a negative out of the left binomial, and you end up now with negative 2 and x minus 100. Okay, now it really should look like intercept form. And your intercepts are at, well, positive 100 and negative 60 because remember they changed their signs. And remember the units. You're talking about price increases, that's your independent variable, and how many units you're, you sell is your dependent variable. So there are those y-intercepts at negative 60 and 100. The maximum revenue, Oh, there's, there, by the way, is um, the uh, path. But the maximum revenue is going to happen halfway between. Where is that? Well, that's at 20. 20 what? 20 price increases. So um, how much and what is a price increase, by the way? A price increase is $20. It is $1. So 20 times $1. So the first question was, how much should each uh, pair uh, be priced at? Well, it should be an increase of 20 prices, price increases, or in other words, an increase of $20 over $60. Price should be 80 bucks. How much revenue will you make if you do 20 price increases? OK. Plug in 20 for x. 20 minus 100 and 20 plus 60 times negative 2. Work that out, you'll find that your revenue is $12,800. Okay, that brings us to the last of the word problems. I've got to try to do this in two minutes, so unfortunately I'm going to do this one relatively quickly. Here's the setup. Hit the pause button, read this, and make sure you understand what you're being asked. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that, and what it's telling you is that the yellow space is the same amount as the green space. They're identical because you're doubling the old lot here in yellow by adding the expanded part in green. Okay, so the yellow space, well, here are the dimensions of the yellow space. I've said it really could be separated into two rectangles. Those add up to 40,500 square feet. The green space, here are the units on the green space, x times 375 plus x and x times these two things. Well, those two things combined make 240 square feet. So it's 240x plus x times that. So here it is, 240x plus x times this thing, 375 plus x. Distribute, combine, you should end up with x squared plus 615x. That describes all this green space. Okay, x squared plus 615x is going to be equal to 40,500. That's saying the green is the same as the yellow. So set them equal to each other. Move them all to one side, leaving the other side equal to zero. And from here, well, you're definitely going to need a calculator to figure this out. But it turns out, if you factor that, that those are the factors. You're only going to want the positive one. Remember, this is going to change its sign. So 60 feet is the distance that you should uh, expand in every direction.
that's it for the video.